Okay, year 12. Uh, today, I'd like to cover the concept of elasticity of demand, particularly in relation to the trade balance. So I covered this concept very briefly in the previous video when we talked about the impact of a depreciation of the Australian dollar on uh, the overall economy. But I thought I'd make a separate video to make sure that you have enough detail regarding this concept uh, to improve your understanding. So the slide now shows uh, the two dot points in your course outline, which this idea uh, of elasticity of demand and the trade balance are linked to. So first of all, uh, the relationship between the balance of payments and the exchange rate. Um, and secondly, the effect of changes in the exchange rate on the economy. Uh, and we're going to be focusing particularly on uh, exports and imports as we are talking about the trade balance. What is elasticity of demand? So a definition of um, elasticity of demand is on the first drop point. So it's how demand for a good or service changes in response to changes in prices. So we know from the law of demand that an increase in the price of a good or service results in a decline in the demand for said good or service. And that's why the demand curve is downward sloping. Um, however, the amount that uh, volumes or demand changes in response to a change in demand differs for each good or service. And we describe this variation um, using this concept of elasticity of demand. So elasticity of demand falls within a spectrum. Uh, on one hand, a good can be um, very elastic when it comes to uh, elasticity of demand or it could be very inelastic. Um, so that's the other extreme. A handy way to remember which, um, or a handy way to remember what inelasticity and elasticity means is um, on the slide at the moment. So if demand for a good or service is inelastic, uh, demand is insensitive to changes in prices. So you can see that the two keywords are inelastic and insensitive and they have uh, this in component in both words. Um, so if that helps you remember, you can use that. Uh, so if demand is insensitive to changes in prices, it means that if prices increase, uh, volumes demanded do not fall by much. So they're insensitive, um, so they're not impacted much. On the other hand, if demand uh, for a particular good or service is elastic, so the opposite of an elastic, uh, if demand for a good or service is elastic, it means that demand is sensitive to changes in prices. So if prices decrease, for example, volumes demanded would thus increase significantly. So there's a strong relationship between changes in prices and changes in volumes demanded. So what actually uh, influences the elasticity of demand for goods or services? So this is going to be a very brief discussion on this, um, as there's much more detail that can be covered. But the key um, driver is whether a good or service has many substitutes. So if you think about two examples, so on the left, you can see uh, spark plugs. So they are a type of um, car part, which all cars or most cars use. Um, and if your spark plug is damaged or is worn out, you need to replace them. And you can't replace them with anything else uh, other than a spark plug. Uh, so you could say that spark plugs don't have many substitutes. Um, so as uh, spark plugs don't have many substitutes, it means that their um, demand is uh, very inelastic. So changes in prices would not change demand for spark plugs much because you need to buy spark plugs to in order for your car to run. Um, the opposite is uh, Coke. So there are many substitutes uh, that you could consume apart from Coke. And this picture shows some of them. So you've got juice, you've got chocolate milk, you've got uh, energy drinks, and you've even got Pepsi. So all those are an example. All those are examples of substitutes, and as Coke has uh, many substitutes, it makes uh, Coke's elasticity of demand high. So if prices of Coke change, uh, so if a can of Coke ends up being double the price, you might decide not to buy uh, 
a can of Coke and go for um, a bottle of juice, for example, or a can of Pepsi. How does this look when we are looking at actual demand graphs? So on the left-hand side, I've plotted um, the demand curve for Coca-Cola, and on the right-hand side, I've plotted the demand curve for spark plugs. So on the left-hand side, um, you can see that an increase in price from $2 to $3 results in a decline in quantity demanded of 10,000 units. So from 15,000 units to 5,000 units. That's a large decline in demand. Um, and the reason for that large decline is because demand for Coca-Cola is elastic. Um, on the other hand, when we look at the change in uh, demand for spark plugs for the same amount of change in price, so spark plugs, if spark plugs uh, were to increase from $2 to $3, we would see a decline in quantity of only 2,000 units. Um, so that is a very small um, change in quantity demanded, and that represents uh, how demand for spark plugs is inelastic. What's the relevance when it comes to the trade balance? So we know that the definition of the trade balance is uh, the prices of exports multiplied by the volume of exports minus the prices of imports multiplied by the volumes of imports. So this is a, an equation that um, we've covered before. Uh, and now we'll consider what might happen if there are you know, changes in the Australian dollar, in particular a depreciation in the Australian dollar. So, a depreciation of, of the Australian dollar has impacts both in the short run and the long run. So we'll, take in, we'll consider what happens in the short run first before moving on to what happens in the long run. So we know that a depreciation in the Aussie dollar reduces export prices um, and increases import prices. Um, and that is represented by the arrows on the slide at the moment, the yellow arrows. So uh, the yellow arrow on the left shows a decline in export prices as our exports become cheaper um, with the decline in the Aussie dollar, uh, while imports become more expensive um, as the Aussie, dollar, the Aussie dollar's purchasing power declines. Initially, the elasticity of demand for exports and imports is low. Uh, as a result, these changes in prices don't have much of an effect on the volumes of exports demanded by non-residents and the volumes, the volumes of imports uh, demanded by Australians. As a result, there's not much change in the volume component of the trade balance, and therefore there is an overall decline or deterioration in the trade balance. Um, so the first um, export term, so uh, X prices multiplied by X volumes declines because of the decline in the uh, export price, while the second term, the import price multiplied by the import volume component increases, so it becomes increasingly negative um, because of the increase in the import price and that uh, lowers the trade balance as well. So what would happen in the long run? So in the long run, we typically assume that um, elasticity of demand for exports and imports is higher than in the short run. And as a result, volumes can actually move. So what actually happens to prices and uh, the prices of exports and imports is the same in the long run as it is in the short run. So a depreciation reduces export prices and increases import prices. However, because of this increased elasticity of demand, uh, export volumes um, increase in response to the decline in export prices. So we can think about, um, you know, for example, if Australia's export of iron ore becomes cheaper, so the export prices decline as a result of a depreciation, um, Chinese firms uh, would want to buy more of our exports, more of that iron ore, because it's cheaper and um, they can get more exports for less um, money. Uh, so that is shown by an increase in the export volumes term. On the other hand, if there is an increase in the prices of imports, uh, we would expect a decline in the volumes of imports because you know uh, residents would consider an increase in the import price as a bad thing. So rather than you know sneakers being imported for two dollars a pop, it might end up being four dollars. 
and you would think twice about importing goods from overseas and perhaps consider buying things domestically. Um, as a result of these two changes, um, so an increase in volumes of exports and a decrease in volumes of imports, the trade balance increases or improves overall. And this is where the discussion of the J curve fits in. So in the short run, which is represented by the red arrow um, in the middle of this graph, we can see that the trade balance, which is represented by that blue curvy line, the trade balance declines initially. But in the long run, we can see that the trade balance picks up um, as volumes of exports increases and volumes of imports decreases. And this is all in a response to a depreciation in the Aussie dollar. Um, so if you ever need to talk about the impact of uh, the Australian dollar on the trade balance, uh, you need to think about whether you're talking about the short run impact or the long run impact. And finally, this is uh, a table which summarizes recent findings uh, by the RBA in terms of elasticities. So we can look at the table which shows how much exports and imports change in response to a depreciation of the Australian dollar. So if we're looking at the export line, uh, it says 0 0.41. So if we're reading the table correctly, it implies that a depreciation of the Aussie dollar will result in an increase in exports uh, of 0.41% in the long run. So that's what we expect. We expect exports to increase in response to a decline or a depreciation in the Aussie dollar. On the flip side, uh, imports are found to fall by 0.35% in response to an increase or in response to an increase of 1% in the um, exchange rate. So those, uh, I guess, empirical or um, uh, research-based results uh, appropriately reflect what we've covered in the theory. So that is um, the relationship between elasticity of demand and the uh, trade balance. If you have any questions, again, um, feel free to contact me. Um, and if any part of this presentation is um, a bit unclear, again, uh, raise your questions and I can get back to you um, when I get the opportunity to. Thank you.